Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be going over my 2020 hurricane season forecast and kind of give you the reasons why I think we're going to end with a very active season. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated. All right. So let's get started. We got a lot to talk about with this one. What we're looking at now is the developing La Nina. Right now we're in a weak phase, but all the guidance is leaning towards a moderate La, La, La Nina, if not a strong one, as we go deeper into fall and start getting into winter. Now, hurricane season lasts all the way through the end of uh, November, but with a developing La Nina, this season could last even beyond that. Typically with La Ninas, you have a lot less shear in the Atlantic. So it, you have a lot more opportunities for tropical storm development later on in the season, especially with a deepening La Nina as we're going to be going into. Now, if we're taking a look at the overall kind of dust index that comes off the African dust coast, there's not much really to work with this time of year. A lot of it's earlier on in the season coming off the African coast, going into the main development region. As you can see later on in the season, yeah, it comes off the African coast, but a lot of, a lot of the guidance and a lot of development is more, is more of an enclosed development into the Caribbean. This, these are the primary areas that we're looking for tropical storm development this time in the season. So the African dust is really not going to be a factor going in later on in the month. But what is going to be a factor is the unbelievably cooler waters in the Pacific. It is dramatically cooled in the equatorial Pacific. And like I said, the Pacific is pretty much going to shut off. You have a lot of shear in the Pacific, but this kind of really amplifies the Atlantic. So I do think we actually go into a little bit more active phase as we get into the second half on October and especially going into the last week of October, going into November. Because you can see a lot of cooler waters uh, in, in the Pacific. And as we zoom in closer to home, we have a lot of upwelling in the Gulf of Mexico from uh, Hurricane Delta that just kind of moved through. But the area to watch this time of, time of the year is the Caribbean. So we kind of search for this area, and this area is still very hot for this later on of the season and you can see right up the coast there's even some warmer water uh, hugging the coast off the east coast so this is the area that i'll be searching for uh, tropical storm development over the next 45 days now if we take a look at what's happening right now from the latest five-day outlook from the national hurricane center they have been tracking a spot that had been coming off the coast of Africa, and it's been very difficult to come uh, to fruition. It's only been getting about a 10 or a 20% chance of it holding together, but it's, it's trying to make its way across the Atlantic, but it's having a hard time because I'll show you on the Japanese model, we've got a lot of sinking air. Now, this model actually comes out every Thursday, and I, I follow this religiously, and this kind of depicts if you look at the some of the orange and red colors it has sinking air and you need you need rising motion air to have some sort of tropical storm development and you can see all the area from the 7th through the 14th is pretty much sinking over the atlantic basin and that's why that tropical storm or at least hot spot is is having a really difficult time uh, to form but by the 14th around Tuesday Wednesday time frame it starts to get a little bit more active you start making a, a transition a lot of the sinking air kind of subsides and I kind of zero into this area around the uh, around the Caribbean upwards off the southeast coast and uh, up north of Jamaica you start to get a little bit more upward rising motion coming back into the pattern so as this tropical wave starts to enter that region it could somewhat try to start developing or start, try to start taking on uh, more of a tropical storm characteristics. But by the end of the month, like after the 20th, around the 21st of the month, this is the week three and four, you see this has really made a transition now. You've got lots of blues and darker blues on the map. Now you've got a lot of upward rising motion air in the Atlantic 
and the Caribbean. So as these waves come across, they'll have a, a much more easier time uh, to develop because the air is going up and not down. <laughs> so you need it to rise to cause lift and uh, create thunderstorm development. And that's what's going to happen, especially after the 20th of the month. And this is pretty much right on target. If you can look at the overall, you know, tropical storms, you know, season, we do have a second peak typically around that time frame where you have a lot of upright, upward rising motion. So around the 19th, 20th time frame, you do have a second peak in tropical storm development historically. And then you actually have another peak around the 9th and 10th of the month of November. So we've got a lot of season left. I mean, historically over the years of the tracking the storms over 100 years, we still had 50 named storms named during this time frame. So there's still a lot of room for development. And, you know, the conditions are becoming more favorable after the 20th of the month to have uh, several more storm opportunities left for the rest of the season. Now, if we take a look at the overall track of hurricanes, tropical storms in October, as well as November, ideally the most predominant track would be coming out of the Caribbean around Honduras era, this area. This is where you have what they call Central American gyra that you know kind of generates and kind of festers in that region and then it's, you know, they're waiting on some sort of trigger. And I'll, I'll show you a, a trigger here in a little bit. But as that trigger is activated, a storm develops. And typically it swings through the Caribbean, through Cuba, up through Florida, and potentially up the East Coast. So this is the overall favored track for October. And then November, it even you know fades away a little bit more and goes out to the open Atlantic. Because a lot of times you have these colder you know cold fronts that you know tr tropical storms they don't like cold fronts <laughs> or troughs so they try to steer away from that so historically that's why their favorite track in november by that time frame we have a lot of colder air coming into the pattern that pushes the these off to seas but not to say that it can't reach you know the u.s it's just a lot more favorable that it won't so now let's take a look at the overall velocity uh, potential over the next 45 days. And there's three areas uh, that really kind of stand out to me. Uh, this is the first area. This is what they call possible Central American gyra. Uh, that's the spot by uh, Central America by Honduras. You can see a little bit of a flare up of some upward rising motion uh, around the 20th, 21st time frame, And then you have a lot a much bigger flare up of uh, upward rising motion by the time you start getting into the end of October into the first week of November. And then potentially you have another flare up of upward rising motion air in the Atlantic basin uh, around the November 11th through the November 16th timeframe. So these are your favorite timeframes of possible uh, tropical storm development coming up over the next 45 days. If you zero in on the latest uh, CFS forecast from the, the 200 millibar pattern, it kind of implies by the 20th of the month, we do have a favored spot where they, I'll show you in a little bit for the, why the models are saying it, what it does. Right now, what we're talking about is what they call pattern recognition. Why the model actually is going to say what it says of all the dynamics come, in, come into play, whether it's kind of like a puzzle. You're trying to find all the pieces of the puzzle and trying to figure out why the model is actually saying what the model is saying and then how this is going to you know, come to fruition as far as a pattern recognition. So if we take a look at the overall climate prediction center, this is why they're highlighted an area around the 20th of the month of moderate tropical storm development in the Central American Honduras region of the Caribbean. And as this develops, this will lift northward through uh, Cuba, potentially going into uh, Florida. We'll just have to see this pl how this plays out towards you know, th the second half of the month after the 20th. So now let's take a look at the overall precipitation water index from the latest GFS model. So yesterday we went over three cold front that's gonna be coming into play. The first one is around the 13th 
of the month a little bit of a mini front but you can see a lot of drier air behind it and this is what's going on in the tropical atlantic here's the wave that the nih nhc is highlighted uh, right now in the atlantic basin but by the time the 19th 20th time frame rolls around that much stronger cold front dives down to the u.s and this will dive down all the way into the gulf of mexico and run into the area that has the central american gyra you know generating and like i said it's looking at some sort of trigger and this is that cold front is actually going to be the trigger that it needs to amplify that area for potentially start to have tropical storm development uh, c come to fruition and by the time the 22nd 23rd time frame rolls around all that kind of comes together and it kind of really blows up something in the caribbean and has a, a formidable storm by that point just south of cuba and possibly lifting through uh through the islands uh, towards uh, the florida region so that's kind of what i'm looking for uh, around after the 20th time frame and the e latest EPS probability guidance kind of implies the same thing. They have a favored spot right around that Central American gyro re region around Honduras where I'm expecting a tropical storm development, potentially ep ep Epsilon by that point, lifting through uh, the Caribbean and then that guidance and overall climate climatologically you know, favored track from historical storms would favor it to push it further north and eventually through the islands and through uh you know the towards the florida region now the latest uh, gfs model kind of shows the same thing a, a storm developing in the central american potentially lifting north a 987 millibar this would be by the 22nd of the month would be a strong tropical storm by that point and this just now kind of getting its act together so after the 20th time frame this region has to be looking out for uh, tropical storm uh, impacts uh, for their for their area and the latest uh, eps cyclone gui guidance over the next 15 days kind of implies the same thing something potentially coming out of the caribbean even potentially even some members showing a stronger storm possibly into a hurricane uh, in this region so this this region has to be on the lookout after the 20th of the month and even the, G, the latest uh, gfs gefs ensemble guidance kind of implies the same thing there's more and more members on a daily basis that are kind of popping up around this region to the 22nd 23rd time frame and some of them show a pretty formidable hurricane so you know <laughs> this area is is no question you know susceptible for larger storms that do come out of the caribbean a lot of a lot of the name storms throughout the year late in the season were i think mitch of uh, 98 was one um, michelle i think of 2001 was a formidable hurricane i know wilma in 2005 in late october came out of this region so this area is a, is a prime target for um you know hurricanes that come out of this uh, region towards the end of the month now if we take a look at the overall greek alphabet names man it's been a a very active season obviously we've gone through delta so far but these are the latest the next names on the list of epsilon zeta eta theta hopefully i hope we don't get to lodo or campa but gosh you know we've had we've had a lot of storms we've had essentially 26 named depressions we've had 25 uh, tropical storms we've had nine hurricanes we've had three of those have been major and 10 of those have actually made landfall in the united states which was a record that beat out the old record of nine back in 1916 so with everything coming to play over the next you know 45 days if we're at 25 storms i do think we get to another four to five named storms on the list just because we have a lot of dynamics uh coming together for an, an end of the active season to this hurricane season and just because the season says it ends in the end of november doesn't mean some seasons do because the most active season on record is was 2005 and here's the greek 
named storms that came out of the basin then you see beta back in late october here's gamma here's uh, here's alpha uh here's uh, epsilon so if epsilon forms in the caribbean this would be well a month ahead of schedule of the 2005 hurricane season and then it didn't end there just because like i said the season ended a month later we had zeta formed in the atlantic and this actually pushed all the way into january and that was the only the second time on record tying the 1954 record of a storm making it into a second calendar year so man uh, 2020 does have a lot of potential left in this hurricane season so i appreciate you guys watching this video if you did find value please like it and definitely leave your comments below and catch me in the next video, Wire Protect You, before and after the storm.